what a year it's been for Berwick Rugby Club. Celebrating their 50th anniversary, their aim was to make a return to National League Rugby after a few years out in the regional leagues. Berwick is a club with a rich history and a track record of providing youngsters with a fantastic environment to learn about the game from some real characters who have been involved with the club for many years. The club have produced international players in the past and in their anniversary year they were also targeting an appearance in the Scottish Shield final at BT Murrayfield for the first time in 16 years. Achieving promotion and getting to the final would be an amazing achievement, but no one could have prepared them for what actually happened. Based in Scremerston, Berwick Rugby Club was actually formed in 1926, but by the time of the Second World War, the club had folded. But in 1968, the club was reborn. And for the last 50 years, it's been producing quality players and enjoying various degrees of success as current president Colin Frame explained. At international level, we've um, produced a, a, a few um, good players. Um, Gavin Kerr, Craig Smith both came through the Berwick um, setup. Um, Andrew Skeen um, was also in the, the Scotland Sevens squad and well known. I think that the highlights, we've had um, a couple of trips to, to Murrayfield and we've got another one just coming up next week, which uh, we're all looking forward to and quite excited, but it's very much the, the cherry on top of our absolutely brilliant season. I became involved with Berwick as a, as a six-year-old boy, uh, so 34 years ago now, um, when my uh, oldest brother, um, pitched up here on a Sunday morning, mini rugby, uh, and George Meakin came across my father and says, why is he not there? And Because of the look of the size of him. Uh, and my dad says, he can't go on, he's only six. And then I was asked if I wanted to go on, and I said, yes, can I go on? And literally never looked back uh, 34 years ago. So no, I loved it, absolutely fantastic. Now you've finished playing now, haven't you? Or haven't you? What no, no, yeah. Definitely well, over. Definitely over. Uh, I just spoke to Eric Henning in there the other now and he says, you're looking fit. He says, you'll get a jersey on. I says, there's more chance of you putting the jersey on than me. <laughs> uh, my motto has been once retired, stay retired. I've seen too many people come back, play the odd game and come off with a serious injury. Uh, so no, I am 100% retired and have been for six years now, seven years. The Berwick Sevens has been part of the Kings of the Seven circuit for a number of years. It's a very big deal for the club, showcasing some of the best rugby talent in Scotland, as well as raising much needed funds for the club. There was a real buzz about the place when I attended the Sevens this year, because Berwick had won all their matches to clinch promotion as East League One champions. And their prize was promotion back to the National Leagues and a place among the top clubs in Scotland next season. But not only that, they won through to the final of the Scottish Shield competition, and that would mean for one of their veteran players, Gareth Hill, a return visit to the National Stadium, where he was mascot as a 12-year-old back in 1998, when Berwick lost to Selkirk in the Shield. And then in 2004, when he was part of the victorious team, which beat Glasgow Ackies. Yeah, that's been the thing, you know, like I've always been a Berwick boy and since from an age right through, so hopefully, like, you know, don't know the starting team for next week, but I'd like to, if I'm in the starting team, because then it's kind of, as the complete set of mascot, I was on the bench for the last one and got like 20 minutes in it, and then if I could be starting this one, it'd just be, you know, sort of like a nice way to round things up, hopefully. Now we've spoken to Colin Young, he's been involved with the club 34 years, yeah. uh, you're not far behind him. Yeah, not far behind, I think if you count when my mum and dad probably carried us into the club when I was a baby, I've, I'm 34 now, so technically but probably as service it would be just under 30 from sort of playing when I was minis I sort of five years old and then let like say I'm 34 years now so a little bit behind Colin so hopefully catch him at some point But the recurring theme is that you know once you start in Berwick you're kind of hooked by the club Yeah let's like say that you know I've always said whatever you put into the club you'll get it back with a thousand times fold you know at the end of the day I've got memories and friendships and actually you know clubs give me experiences that's enabled me to go on to do my job sort of thing outside of the club and you know you can never repay that so you just keep coming back because you just really enjoy it here and let's like say you always make it feel welcome and it's very much a totally amateur team isn't it the whole setup yeah let's like say you know we're not in the position where we can afford to play as players and even if we could because of where we're situated you know you're, you're competing against you know sides in Edinburgh you know they've got like easy pools like you know do you want to travel two miles or do you want to travel 60 miles 
else to train and potentially get money. So like you say, we've always based ourselves on that and you know we've had good youngsters coming along and like some youngsters have gone off to test them off at higher standards and we've always said right crack on if you want to come back here one day and bring that experience we'll love to have you back and I think you know you've just got to be realistic you know you've got to deal with what you've got in front of you and you know last year we had 12 youngsters come through and this year we've had another five or six and hopefully I think from this course team's another five or six because we've got years where there's big gaps where there's like no one's playing and it's just because we haven't had many numbers come through but you know we've, we've got it right at the junior setup now and it's just it's quite encouraging for us older boys when you see all these youngsters pushing you at training and saying oh I'm faster than you I can outstep you in that and you're like well, we'll see and it just gives you that little bit of motivation to keep training hard. Well Tom what a season to be captain of Berwick Rugby Club. Yeah yeah it's been a, a great season for the boys um, couldn't have asked for more really a uh, great commitment and uh, yeah we've managed to win East One promotion up into the National Leagues which I think we're all sort of on board with and um, yeah, a good shield campaign as well, so yeah, not complaining. And a lot's happened in 50 years, there's a lot of uh, big names and good names that have come through the club, the Andrew Skeens, the, uh, obviously Gavin Kerr, all these sort of people, uh, Mark Lee, and you're now involved with a, with a new generation of future stars. Yeah, we are, yeah, yeah, we've got people representing at, at all different levels, few in the Northumberland setup and... Yeah, no, those names you've mentioned are all familiar places around the club. Uh, we had our club dinner this week and, you know, at least uh, five or six of those were there. So they're all buying into what we're about. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we've got a young group of players mixed with a few older ones. Um, obviously, Skeena's come back. It's a massive contribution to the team. And, uh, yeah, we're just, you know, uh, hoping to, to, to do it this weekend and have the, have the best finish of the season that we can possibly have. At the start of the season, we said um, promotion was what we wanted in back into National League Rugby. Um, we know that um, there's a financial cost to doing that, but when you've got a talented look uh, group of uh, players that we have, a lot of them haven't tasted National League Rugby yet, and as a, a coaching staff and as an executive and as a committee, we wanted them to experience that because they have to keep testing themselves. So. That was, that was the number one priority, was the league. So we were delighted to wrap that up um, nice and early, get that promotion, look forward to it. And then Murrayfield and going back and give, having the chance to um, compete for the, the National Shield um, is just something that we're really, really looking forward to. I'm a great believer in we set our own standards within the club. And um, we don't pay players. Um, we don't try and attract players from other clubs. We find that if you build from the foundations, um, the mini section is part of our club. They sit on our executive board. The midi section sit on our executive board. And we, um, our sole purpose is to produce players for rugby. We hope that a lot of them play here in Berwick. But if players go on and play for other clubs, well, that's fine. The, the game of rugby grows. But um, if you um, have a golden generation and you go up the leagues, you have to ride that and enjoy that. But equally... If those players retire or leave and you come back down the leagues, you have to take those rough times. And that's what makes times like this all the sweeter, because it really has been an absolutely golden anniversary season for us. Rugby's changing dramatically. How are Berwick going to cope and how do you see things happening over the next few years? Yeah, I mean, without being controversial, I think um, Super Sixes is obviously the sort of the flavour of the month at the moment. And I think um, all of uh, rugby in Scotland is looking at how that's going to impact um, there's a concern that Super 6 doesn't actually grow the number of players that are involved um, for a club of our size um, down the sort of lower edges it's not necessarily about the, the clubs that are involved in Super 6 but it's the clubs that are above us that maybe get players taken away into Super 6 they in turn will have to sort of look elsewhere and I think um, we're getting things right here um, we do have a proper community club I think um, when you look at the effort that's come through and the talent that's coming through that we produce um, I think there are um, other clubs that just need to look to themselves and sort of um, look at in incorporating their own youth set up into the main club and I think if they do that I think um, Scottish rugby will have its challenges always has done um, but I think we can, we can make a difference and we can go forward Let's take you back to 1997 then, you were yeah. a mascot. How did it all come about? So um, I did the scoreboard um, when it first came up. I was asked by um, Colin Dad's uh, John Young to do the scoreboard and I went, did it all Yeah, I went to the away games with the team as well and, and I think they, the team asked for me to do it as mascot. They said, we want Gareth to do it because like, he's given us you know, sort of his time up on a Saturday when it was cold, wet and windy. He has on a January day, you know, it's quite cold when you're sort of like 12 years old and you're suffering hypothermia. And they asked me if I wanted to go up and uh, yeah, I said yes yeah, straight away and 
I think there's a picture of me walking out with Nigel and Nigel's the one that's reassuring me because I was extremely nervous walking out. I was like, just like you say, it was a massively proud moment for myself, uh, you know, walking out with Nigel and leading the club out to the first Murrayfield final. But yeah, and like you say, the players looked after me so well that day. I mean, like you say, they put some beer cans in my bag for my dad. So when I got home, you know, just to make sure that was a nice present for him. Obviously at 12, I wasn't allowed to drink then. Um, but you know, you know, that sort of stuck with me, how they looked after me. And you know, we've got Guy Muirson who played in that final that day. His son's going to be the mascot this time. And I think it's a great little thing, you know, just all these small club things that always interlinks, you know, Guy played in the first one, his son's going to be mascot in this one. Hopefully, you know, when he gets to senior level, he'll eventually get to play in one as well. Then, of course, that great day for Berwick Rugby Club, beating Glasgow Academicals, um, yes. scoring about 40 points, I think, as well. Yeah, it? so at half-time we were losing. Um, we weren't actually playing that well in the first half, and it was uh, Robert Haggerston scored a try just before half-time, which kind of gave us a, a bit of a spur. And then Matthew McCree from the second half, I think the, uh, the commentary called him Harry Potter, because in the second half, everything he did literally just turned to gold and he was incredible but you know that just that little try before half time just probably gave the boys a bit of belief and then you know by the time I came on sort of with 20 minutes to go they'd won the game within 20 minutes and you know it was quite nice coming on with no pressure just <laughs> thinking oh and he might need to score a try to win the game but you know the boys played superbly in that 20 minutes after second half they just blew them away. Well just finally Gareth just sum up this club for for you personally and, and, and overall. I think for me it's just like I said at the start it was you know it is my family you know my, my dad was president here, my mum's always been here, my sister still buys in the lottery here. I've made all my friends here, you know, my best man's come from Berwick Rugby Club when I got married. You know, it is, I just base it as my family and that's all I can really say about it, it is just my family. Berwick have produced two Scottish internationals in their time, both in the front row. Craig Smith was one product of Scremiston, while the other was Gavin Kerr. Smithy and I uh, both started off there. Uh, Smithy was a back row when he played there, but yeah, we um, we always you know we always go back when we can. Uh, you know, like you say, you know the whole that, that's always going to be a club I'll go back to in, in terms of you know they gave me a lot when I started off my career. You know, it was although, although it was just a, a junior career, it was uh, it's where it all started. Um, you know, and I wish and as I say, I've got I've got to do a wee message for them for uh, for next weekend for. To wish them all the best. So. The club did a lot for me when I was younger, so it's nice to come back and put something back into the club. And I think I always said that I would I would finish off here. So yeah, it's been a really good season for us. 50th anniversary as well, so it's a great time for it to happen. Game promotion off to Shield final next week at Murrayfield, so it couldn't have been much better, really. Can you get that cherry on the top? Well, that's that's been the plan. So yeah, we're hoping we can uh, we can turn up next week and get the job done. But of course, I mean, a lot of youngsters coming through. I mean, it's a new generation of Berwick players, and they're looking up to people like Colin Young, who've done it before, and uh, obviously yourself. And you're able to give your experience back to the youngsters. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, Youngie's been been to Murrayfield before, so is, so is one or two of the boys, um, Gareth Hill as well. Uh, so no, it's it's a really good blend. There's a lot of good 19, 20 year olds coming up through the team, and putting pressure on some of the older boys. But equally, we can give them, you know, a little bit of experience and just help them at key times. So what's it going to be like for you running out at the BT Murrayfield? Yeah, look, it's uh, it's been a bit of a goal kind of all season um, and I said to the boys it's, it's a funny one I'll, I'll not get another chance to do it really um, with us getting promoted you know next year we're not we're not going to have that opportunity we're in the National Cup we'll not be playing at Murrayfield so it's probably it's probably my last chance and for some of the other boys as well they might not get another shot so I uh, got to really make the most of it. The club had one game to complete in the league to go through their league season unbeaten but before that it was the big match the Scottish Shield final at BT Murrayfield. A huge day for the club, who were now champions of the East Region, against the champions of the West, Greenock Wanderers. And by the interval, it was close, with Greenock getting their noses in front. After the break, the Wanderers kicked on, with some good tries taking them out to a 35-11 lead, with under 20 minutes to go. It looked like the Berwick unbeaten run was coming to an end. But then, a lifeline, with Gareth Hill scoring a try. The clock ticked down to five minutes left and Berwick still needed to score 17 points to force extra time. What happened next was quite extraordinary. With five minutes to go, Berwick was still adrift 35-18. Hill scored another, but surely all that did was make the score respectable. Wrong again. On 77 minutes, Ewan Thompson got the touchdown on what was a scrappy-looking try, but the old count, 35-28. Greenock were running the clock down and with seven seconds remaining gave away a penalty. 
It was Berwick's last chance. They kept the ball alive and headed back upfield. Scott Owen scored, leaving Berwick just two points short with the conversion to come. Up stepped Andrew Skeen at 35 years old. He started his career off at Berwick. He was going to finish it at Berwick. He slotted the kick. It was all level at 35-35. Unbelievable stuff and a further 20 minutes of extra time. Berwick went in front for the first time in the match with a Skeen penalty. Then Ali Greave showed off his football skills with a chip and chase and a try. In the second period of extra time, Jack Dalrymple completed his brace with this interception try and that would take Berwick at least two scores clear and sealed the win. Skeen wrapped things up at the end with a tenth Berwick try and it was job done for Berwick in a breathtaking match. The boys stuck at it, you know, right to the 80th minute and we came back in and then the chat of the break, we were just like, boys, this is our game now. The, their energy had dropped and we were like, now we're ready to go. And I mean, like I say, you couldn't write a better game to win. Like I say, we'd rather done it the simple way, but we'll take that. We've said all season our fitness has been prime, and we showed it today with uh, with uh, uh, seven seconds to go. I think it was when we scored our last try, or we taking a penalty and scoring. Absolutely proud, and Andrew to hold the nerve there to slot the final conversion. You know, last kick, and that's the metal of the boy, and that's why he's played at that level because he is a class act. You're just you're just like a number on the sidelines where you want to get out there and, and be a part of it and, and try and help the boy but on the sidelines you're there to encourage them keep them going and, and, and making key decisions as, as, as we emptied the bench we knew we had a strong bench it was just a case of when they came on and we didn't weaken we didn't tire where I thought they'd slightly did tire just a little bit um, so credit to the guys but a season's long hard work has paid today because the numbers at training the fitness has been great and it's a credit to these guys if somebody was writing scripts um, the, the scripts the fairy tale ending um, the fifth year a promotion uh, and and the shield but we set out at the beginning of the season to say where we wanted to be and this is where we wanted to be as a group of players but we knew we had it in us uh, and it's an absolute credit to the club and the, to all the committee who supported us and all this crowd that came up today absolutely buzzing I'm just trying to sort of take it all in at the minute. Uh, we've pl they've played a lot of rugby there. Absolutely amazing day for the club. You know, when you're down at half time, it does put doubts in your mind, but I've had absolutely no doubt in the belief of these players. We had it in the tank, and uh, that is a really impressive performance. You know, we've got a really good mix of young and old, and I'm just so, so proud of the boys. To be honest, I didn't have a doubt at the time. We came up today, we had a thought we might go down, but. There wasn't a doubt there at all. We played really well, defended with our hearts on our sleeve and 50th anniversary of the club, what more could you want? Like I didn't, didn't quite expect it to happen like that. I said all week that we, we would probably be stronger in the last 20 and that was kind of what I was hoping, but yeah, I didn't expect to be, I can't remember, it was 19 points down or something, we're about eight minutes to go. So to turn that around with a couple of blown opportunities in there as well was, uh, was something else. So, and then, yeah, extra time as well, always tough, but a couple of things went our way. And then uh, after that, it was pretty pretty well controlled by us. That was a nice way to finish. So uh, that, was, that was nice for me on a personal note. But yeah, look, all the boys, every one of them stepped up today. It was a real squad effort. They've all put a massive effort in. And a testament to them to keep believing because with 20 minutes to go, it would have been easy to, to give up. Kept saying, look, we can win this. I, I was confident. I don't know how much they believed me, but in the end, we got there. The way we won it as well, to, to go to extra time, to have a kick on the last play, to get it to extra time, and then to go on and win it. And to come from so far behind, it's, it's massive. Hometown, home club, a lot of young boys. Great day for the club. 50th anniversary, brilliant season, great way to finish it off. Ten minutes left on the pitch, on the normal time we said, look, we can we can still do this. Uh, just keeping the belief on the, the pitch and and when we scored the first one, we're like, yeah, next one, bang, and then that final one, right at the end, we're like, like we knew fine well, two minutes left to go, we're like, we've got this. And they were on their feet, so it's, it's massive, especially going into next year, probably playing Greenock again next year. It's, it's a big, big thing, it was kind of a little statement to say that we're not coming up like a few years ago and going back down, like our aim is to go back up again and keep 
keep climbing basically. And the celebrations continued into the dressing room. Our reporter Hugh Brown was there. I can't believe it. Absolutely shocked. I'm still in a... As I say, I'm still in a state of shock. I'm just... I mean, with 20 minutes left, you were dead and buried. Uh, well, we had some strong words behind the posts and we knew we had that many such good support and all the boys have been working the entire season for it and we thought we can't let ourselves down now in one game. And so we sort of rallied in the last 10 and <laughs> luckily we went on and when we got to extra time we knew we, knew we could do it. So in just pure joy, still can't believe it. Where did you find the stamina from? Because that, that's a lot of rugby to play. Uh, I, didn't, <laughs> I, just, I don't know where it came from but somehow I managed it. I knew if I got caught I'd never live it down so I thought I may as well, uh, I better put it under the posts I suppose. <laughs> Unbelievable character. It shows how tight they are as a group of mates, never mind rugby players, you know, and that just proved into my character today. I mean, Greenock must have thought they had it in the bag with 20 minutes to play. Oh, I think so. Huh? I think you, you've seen them running up and down the touchline celebrating like they'd already picked the trophy up. So you should never do that, you know, always wait till the final whistle, but some character by the boys, like. You're looking from the bench thinking, where's the try coming from? But we knew we just needed that one moment just to spark it. And if we could just get that one try, it would get us back in the game. And uh, yeah, it came. And then once that first try came, just we all had belief from the bench right under the pitch. We knew we could do it. And uh, yeah, great to see it through. Because actually I was watching from the stand and Greenock were celebrating even with 15, 10 minutes to go. Yeah, I mean, we could actually hear yeah, on the pitch and from the bench there's a loud Greenock crowd, uh, especially when it come off. I think they probably thought they had it won. I think a lot of people did. Uh, and, you know, to give their 13 the man of the match. I thought he had a great game, by the way. Uh, to give him the man of the match with five minutes to go, it just shows probably how out of it we were at that point. We set out at the start of the season, the goal was promotion uh, to get to the Shield final. And uh, yeah, to, to win it in the 50th year for the club is just, uh, yeah, like I say, you couldn't write it. What do you think this means for the town then? I don't know so much for the town, but for the club. 50th year, um, we've won the league, unbeaten throughout the league and the cup. Um, just roll on next year, really. Berwick went on to complete an unbeaten season in their 50th anniversary year. They achieved promotion back to the national leagues and they won the Scottish Shield. You really couldn't have written a script like that.